walloping window blind. The wind that blew dismayed the crew or troubled the captain's mind. The man in the wheel was made to feel contempt for the wildest blow. But when often appeared when the gale had cleared, then he fed it into a field. Charles Darwin probably looked on with pride at the evolutionary process the world's navies were undergoing during the latter half of the 19th century. In less than 40 years, most of the world's major navies would completely transition from sail to steam and from wood to iron. This left entire fleets of sailing warships obsolete. The American Navy was no exception, and it is interesting to look at the intermediate designs of warships as they made the transition to new methods of steam propulsion. The first solutions were hybrid ships, boasting both full sets of masts and sails, as well as fully functional steam engines. As the 1800s rolled around, the engines got bigger, and the sails and masts got smaller. With the last masts on ships at the beginning of the 20th century being little more than relics and unnecessary vestiges left over from the great age of sail. But today, we discuss the fact that steam power enabled the development of another major innovation for ships during this period, electricity. Electricity, and therefore electric light, arrived in the U.S. Navy soon after its development, and in 1883, the Navy commissioned the Thomas Edison Lighting Company to install lights on the USS Trenton, an obsolete wooden-hauled and steam-powered battleship. The Trenton marked both the beginning of the era of electricity on naval ships, development which continues at a frenzied pace today, and the end of the great age of sailing warships. In an exclamation point on the end of the sailing age, Trenton was sunk in a hurricane in 1889, along with two other American and three German sailing ships in what is now American Samoa. In episode 30, we discussed how the U.S. and other powers expanded to the Pacific during the 19th century, when Trenton and the other German and American warships were sunk in the harbor during a hurricane. They had been in the middle of a months-long standoff over control of the islands. Although this conflict is mostly forgotten by history books, it is the sinking of the Trenton, the first American warship with electricity, and one of the last made of wood and with sails, that really marked the end of the Age of Sail and the beginning of the modern naval force as we know it today. The story of the transition from sail to steam and the adoption of electricity on board Navy ships is told by our object today, a barnacle-covered light bulb recovered from the wreck of the famous USS Maine. The Maine was a classic example of the ships that got stuck between the Age of Sail and steam. Although absolutely an ironclad, steam-powered warship, the Maine nevertheless carried two masts, and its original design still included three full sailing masts as backup propulsion. The explosion of the Maine in Havana Harbor on February 15, 1898, sparked an American media backlash that helped lead the U.S. to war with Spain in the Spanish-American War. We will discuss this conflict in future episodes, but for now, we are joined by both Tom Cutler of the Naval Institute and Jim Cheevers of the Naval Academy Museum to talk a little bit more about electricity in the Navy and the USS Maine. We will first go to Tom Cutler. The advent of electricity is absolutely immense for the Navy. Uh, it changes so many things for the Navy. Uh, the obvious thing when they first come along is, is uh, lighting, just being able to light the spaces uh, down below decks was a, was a huge uh, improvement uh, without having to use open flames and that sort of thing. But it also was used to create uh, motors and generators which allow you to power winches and uh, capstans and things like that. Um, then it goes on to further and further developments. It starts developing into things like radar, radio, sonar, all of these things are, are direct out croppings of, of electricity and uh, one of the interesting things about the Navy is it was one of the earliest uh, uh, developers of elect electricity and, and for years people would that were trying to learn about electricity would take the Navy basic electricity course and even today you can find that online in various places that same course is still out there and the, the principles are the same and it, it's really not a bad course to, to learn electricity from. 
development of electricity is also continuing even today. Um, two important innovations that are being uh, employed in modern ships are the rail gun, which is uh, now you're not using explosive propellant, but using magnetism as a way to fire rounds. And, and this is not fully developed yet, but it's on the way and it's going to be huge. And the other one is electricity is being used, elect, uh, electric propulsion is now in. We've been through all kinds of innovations between from sails to uh, steam to various other things, and now uh, electrical generators are being used to actually power ships uh, through the water. And that's the seems to be the new and coming thing, too. We now go to the Naval Academy Museum with Jim Cheevers. I'm here with my favorite light bulb. It's a fascinating object removed from the USS Maine, which sunk off Havana, Cuba on the night of February 15, 1898, precipitating the Spanish-American War. Uh, Maine was one of the first electrified ships in our Navy. Uh, and object souvenirs from the Maine have always fascinated me. I, I often joke that it's the heaviest ship ever in the history of our Navy because there are so many souvenirs off of it. Uh, I don't understand how it could have ever floated. Um, almost immediately after the explosion and the sinking of the Maine, divers were sent down to actually check the captain's cabin to see if the keys to the powder magazines were still tied to the bottom of his bunk uh, and to you know, establish whether internal sabotage had led to the explosion. Uh, the first diver uh, actually reported that the bags containing the keys were missing, but he also reported that the captain's mattress had floated to the top of the cabin. So on the next dive, he checked around the edges of the mattress and discovered that the keys uh, were there in the cloth bags, uh, ruling out at least that aspect of internal sabotage. Uh, Twelve years after the sinking of the Maine, the wreck was, uh, a cofferdam was built around the wreck and the wreck was refloated uh, to clear the shipping channel off Havana and towed out to sea and resunk. At that time, many more souvenirs like this light bulb uh, with the barnacle growing on it were removed uh, from the ship. Uh, and we have drawers full of many rusting objects recovered from the USS Maine. Uh, the light bulb, of course, is now on exhibit at the United States Naval Academy Museum, which I hope you will consider coming to visit. We're open to the public seven days a week, Monday through Saturday from 9 to 5, and Sundays from 11 to 5.